Hi guys. Well, it was supposed to be a some big ass storm coming through here. Some sort of flash flooding and severe thunderstorms and all of that good stuff. But it barely got the grass wet here on Wednesday night, June twenty second. 2022 the second day of summer so uh, as completely exhausted as I am uh, I'm finally gonna check in with our friends at oilprice.com haven't checked in with oilprice.com in a couple of weeks and it's like it's an interesting uh, an interesting collection of flotsam and jetsam. Uh, not sure what some of this means. I, there's, I've got 10 stories picked out from oilprice.com, so I don't have time to really get into any of them as much as I would like to. So we're just going to dive right in. Before we get into uh, the price of gas and all of that, don't forget the other, the other side of oil, the petrochemical industry. Yes, the petrochemical industry is set to explode, <clears throat> probably in more ways than one. The global movement to ditch fossil fuels is largely focused on transportation and industry, but the petrochemical industry will need fossil fuels for decades to come. The value of the petrochemical market is forecast to grow to $1 trillion by 2030, increasing demand for crude oil and natural gas. Yes, as countries around the globe are setting ambitious targets to reduce their dependency on fossil fuels, many will remain reliant on oil and gas for petrochemical production <coughs> for decades to come. Yes, Talking about you know, one trillion dollars in the next eight years. The increase in demand will be mainly centered around the construction, textile, medical, pharmaceutical, consumer goods, automotive, and electronics industries. And Look for more and more ethylene, propylene, and benzene. Yes, being used across the packaging, electronics, plastics, and rubber industries. Most petrochemical products are manufactured using crude oil and natural gas, making many industries highly reliant on the fossil fuel sector and it should not be any surprise that the Asian Pacific region is expected to dominate the petrochemical market over the next decade. Do you think so? Okay, a few confusing stories out of our own country. All I know, right here, uh, the Finger Lakes of New York, I have noticed the price of gas going up. We have finally, it's been sitting right at the four ninety nine nine mark, but for the first time in history, as far as I know, right here, the price of gas in this neighborhood has gone above $5 a gallon while I am reading all of this stuff in the mainstream media that the price of gas is going down. 
And so who knows what the truth is. But this, of course, is oilprice.com, who, who, of course, you, you know, you do have to remember that this site is, you know, is for oil company investors, for fossil fuel investors. So factor that into this roundup. So according to oilprice.com, U.S. gasoline demand is increasing, not waning. U.S. gasoline demand increased by 5.5% on Sunday compared to the previous Sunday and was 11.4% higher than the average U.S. demand of the past four Sundays, according to data from the fuel saving app Gas Buddy. In the week between June 12th and June 18th, the U.S. gasoline demand jumped by 6.3% from the prior week and was 7.4% above the rolling four week average. It was the highest week of. 2022 last week. There you go. At the same time over the past week, U.S. national average gasoline prices fell for the first time in nine weeks by an average of 4.2 cents from a week ago, although that's not true in this area of the country. Uh, still, the national average is 37.3 cents uh, higher from a one month ago and a dollar 92 per gallon higher than one year ago. <clears throat> there you go, buck 92. So if the gas is falling in your town, be glad, I guess. Okay, while well, all that is happening, so gasoline demand is going up while U.S. refining capacity sinks to near decade low. Operating <coughs> refining capacity in the U.S., Hit a nearly decade low in 2022, the EIA's latest refining capacity report showed yesterday. U.S. refining capacity f fell this year to 17.94 million barrels per day. Yeah, yeah that sounds like a real drastic fall. Uh, yeah. 17.94 million barrels per day, down from 18.09 million barrels per day last year. Uh, U.S. refining capacity is now the lowest it has been since 2014. There you go. Uh, This year's refining capacity has decreased by more than a million barrels per day. There you go. Uh, down an average 16.3 million barrels per day last week. Down 67,000 barrels per day over the previous week. Running at 93.7% of operating capacity. Okay, so we've got all of that. And then they ask the question, why is the United States still exporting fuel? Yes, U.S. fuel exports have continued to rise 
adding additional pressure on domestic fuel inventories. Yep, yep, yep. You know, this is just confuse us till we die. Uh, the White House is desperate to lower gasoline prices, which are the most in, the most important election issue for many Americans. Yes, it is. Uh, Ideas being juggled by Biden range from invoking the Defense Production Act to boost refining capacity and output to restrictions on oil exports. So why are we continuing? The problem with this article, it really doesn't answer their question. Uh, okay, you get down to the bottom of the story. However, a partial ban on petroleum export, exports would backfire as it would create additional supply chain, supply shortages globally, driving oil prices higher. I am not an oil uh, price analyst like these guys. That doesn't make any sense to me. I I anyway, uh, restrictions on U.S. exports would also send a mixed message to U.S. allies in a divided world, especially to allies in Europe, which is looking to phase out Russian oil. Yeah, right. Uh, and refined products within eight months when the EU embargo on Russian oil officially kicks in. We'll see how many times that changes. Uh, I will make the prediction right now that the EU embargo on Russian oil is going to completely fall apart by the end of the year. And here we go. Uh, so kicking the can down the road. So what is going on this week? <clears throat> wow. Europe's refineries increase Russian crude purchases. I've already had this rant. This is Vladimir Putin laughing all the way to the bank. Europe's refineries took in an increasing amount of crude oil last week. Yes, from Russia, tanker tracking data has shown Europe's refineries took in 1.84 million barrels per day of Russian crude oil last week. This is the third increase in the amount of Russian crude for European refineries in as many weeks. The oil flows from Russia to Europe are now the highest they have been in nearly two months. Do you think so? Uh, the EU has agreed to embargo 90% of all of its oil imports from Russia by the end of the year. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, from Europe to China. Wow. Russia overtakes Saudi Arabia as China's top oil supplier. Yes, Chinese imports of Russian crude oil surged by 55% in May as the world's biggest importer of oil took advantage of major discounts. Russia 
has now overtaken Saudi Arabia as China's top oil suppliers. Yep, 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 yep. There you go. So there, China's buying nearly 2 million barrels per day. Uh, there you go. A record volume of cheap Russian oil which sells at steep discounts to crude from other countries made its way to Chinese refineries last month. Yeah. There you go. All right, but we're going to go from crude oil to natural gas. Natural gas is now in the limelight as power demand soars. With oil mar while oil markets remain incredibly tight, it is natural gas markets that are making headlines in energy markets this week. Russia is sending less natural gas to European countries and Northeast Asian nations are seeing power demand surge amid intense heat waves. Can you say turn up the air conditioning? Russian pipeline gas supplies have dropped to their lowest in years with Gazprom sales uh, plunging. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, European governments see the volume drop as Russia's way of exacting revenge for the oil and coal sanctions slapped on Moscow recently. There you go. So, uh, what is going on in Europe with this latest announcement? Europe faces red alert for gas supply as Russia reduces flows. You can see how the planet is uh, really talking about weaning itself off fossil fuels. Russia's Gazprom significantly reduced gas flows to Europe, European consumers this week. Uh, Unless Europe takes additional supply and demand measures, its storage refill this year is at risk. Meanwhile, benchmark European gas prices soared by more than 50% this week. Yep, the risk of a difficult winter of gas rationing for industries and another surge in energy bills for consumers in Europe just became greater as Russia escalated the gas row with the EU by slashing supply to major customers. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, the significantly lower supply from Russia since last week and the upcoming annual maintenance at Nord Stream that will completely halt deliveries through that pipeline for two weeks in July, leaving Europe scrambling to fill gas storage sites to adequate levels before the winter. The Russia-Europe gas war sent European prices soaring by 50% uh, in just one week and prompted governments into Euro in Europe to consider energy-saving measures and a switch 
to some mothballed coal-fired power capacity to conserve as much gas as possible, which is the next story, which is the Netherlands and Germany. The, the headline is Netherlands to burn more coal to conserve gas. Do you, uh, do you see what's going on here? The Netherlands will ease its current restrictions on coal-fired power plants. Yes, uh, do you think so? The news from the Netherlands comes as Germany looks to lift its, its restrictions on coal-fired power as well. Yep, as some in the European Union try to conserve natural gas. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, anyway, uh, the Netherlands' ambitious coal phase-out plans met with harsh resistance from utilities. I bet they did. Uh, anyway, you can expect more coal burning all over Europe, Asia, and everywhere else. But we're going to end up with this hilarious knee slapper coming out of Ecuador. Of all places, I, I would like to hear what Rhett Butler would have to say about this BS headline, this absolute knee slapper. All right. Ecuador halts all oil operations amid escalating protests. Okay, what does the term halt all oil operations sound like to you? Does it sound like that the country of Ecuador is just stopping oil production because a, a, a bunch of uh, Amazon Indians are complaining? Yeah, right. If anybody on this planet believes for one millisecond that Ecuador is going to halt all oil operations because some pesky Indians in the Amazon jungle are whining. Uh, you need to go reread, uh, I, 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 I don't know, any history book written in the last 500 years, pretty much. Uh, this, this, that is complete, total BS fake news. So what is, when you get down to this story, uh, you get past this BS headline, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what the editor was smoking writing that crap. Ecuador's state-owned oil company Petro Ecuador declared force majeure across exploration, production, and transportation operations amid escalating protests against the government, you know, by these indigenous people. This means, this means that exports of oil from the Andean country will be halted. Yes, as protesters entered oil fields. Uh-huh. I love this one. The protests by indigenous peoples in Ecuador against the economic policies of the government of Guillermo Lasso, which have recently included fuel price hikes. That I, 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 I love it. 
that the the Amazon Indians not wanting any oil being produced in their backyard, and I don't blame them. I don't. Want, I don't want uh, any oil being produced in my backyard either. Uh, I'm totally with the guys. So, on one hand, they're protesting the oil drilling, and then they're whining about the price of gas going up. Uh, this is called uh, not having your cake and not eating it too, I think. Yes, uh, it's prompted the president to declare a state of emergency across three provinces. Yes, this did not stop the protest as people demanded cheaper fuel and food price controls. Yes. Um, in addition to the economic demands of the protesters, talking about lowering the price of gas, they also want a suspension of new mining and oil projects, Reuters reported, as a result of these protests. Petro-Ecuador said it has lost some, right at 7,000 barrels of crude oil. There you go, 7,000 barrels. And has had, all right, and has had to suspend some drilling operations. There is a big difference between Ecuador halts oil operations, and the sentence you find way down in this story, Ecuador suspends some drilling operations. Okay, so now for anybody believing that Ecuador is going to let a few pesky Indians uh, stop oil production, Let's look at uh, a few figures coming out of Ecuador. Ecuador has proven reserves of some 8.2 billion barrels of crude oil. Ecuador, I think, is about the size of Louisiana. Ecuador has proven reserves of some 8.2 billion barrels of crude oil, but is producing only about 400,000 barrels per day. Petro Ecuador, however, has the ambition to double this figure over the next five years and is looking for private sector investments of up to $12 billion to do it. Uh, this is uh, a company statement. Uh, in order to complete these projects within the planned deadlines, private capital and adequate regulations to provide legal certainty to those keen to invest in the hydrocarbon sector will be needed. This is catered towards fossil fuel executives. Uh, the chief executive of the company whose name they don't say, quote, there are approximately 45 billion barrels of oil. Okay, right here, Ecuador has proven reserves of 8.2 billion barrels, and then the chief executive of Petro Ecuador, quote, there are approximately 45 billion barrels of oil identified, and only 14 percent is being produced a figure 
that shows resources are not being used properly. So I guess you take your pick, 8.2 billion barrels, billion barrels, or 45 billion barrels. Anybody, say anybody believing that Ecuador is halting all of its oil operations. It is suspending a tiny few of its oil operations in three areas while looking to quintuple, is that the right word, its output of crude oil. So, if you want to make money off the collapse of the Amazon rainforest, I suggest uh, investing in Petro Ecuador to make money off the collapse of a planet. Oilprice.com, uh, if you want to make money off the collapse of a planet, oilprice.com is your go-to spot. But anyway, my go-to spot is my bed because I am ruined. I highly suggest you go to your go-to spot while you can still get to it. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. Did you survive? Are you ready to go to bed?